Today we're going to look at working through issues in the wrists and the forearms. So whether that's from typing or using your hands a lot, bearing weight through yoga practices or any other movement, uh, just creating some ease through the joints and through the muscles, the forearms that support the wrists. We're just gonna get started by simply creating some friction and warming up the skin layer of the muscles. Now, especially if it's warm outside, if you just took a shower, you could skip this step. Um, it already feels like the muscles are pretty warmed up, but it's just a nice way to uh, just open up the tissue a little more so it's easier as you get into deeper work. Good. And then starting to flick through the fingertips, so making fists and then flicking out. Starting to warm up through your muscles here, especially through the extensors. This is a great exercise to add into your routine, especially if you do to yoga. Uh, can be, you can start to feel the arms fatigue pretty quickly here. Try to maintain a steady speed. A couple more seconds, and then shake that out. Good. So after that warm up, we'll start off with using your opposite form to release the form that you're working on. So finding blocks, or if you have a table, allow your forearm to rest on your block or your table, palm facing up. We'll start with the flexors. Use the opposite forearm and rest it right at the top, right below your elbow. Now you wanna be able to have some leverage. So the blocks find a nice height for you or find a low table. So you can really use your body weight to lean in and create more pressure. Both hands are completely relaxed here. We don't want to create any more tension um, as we're releasing the forearms in the forearms. And just starting with that static pressure downwards, adjusting as you need. And then after you start to feel the muscles give way a little bit, start to angle your pressure down towards the wrist. So you're thinking about hooking into the tissue and dragging, but not really uh, active drag, you don't want to think about moving too quickly. You want to see if the muscles, the connective tissue, the fascia, starts to kind of let you go and pulls you down, pulls this working forearm down towards uh, the wrist. So it's pretty slow work, take your time. And as the fascia starts to unwind, you start to make your way towards the wrist. Flipping it over to the extensors, palm face down, really see how far you can rotate that palm down to get it as much access as you can to the top. Now our extensors aren't very meaty, so we're really going to focus on the common extensor tendon. It's right below the elbow, and you should feel kind of a ropiness there. We're going to focus our attention here. Taking your forearm once again, and that same downward pressure. Now I find that it's a little bit trickier with the angle of the arm to get to the extensors. And often I like to use more of my elbow and kind of wrap around and hook so I can get the outer side of um, the extensor muscles as well. But whichever one you choose, just find some static pressure downwards. And using your breath to exhale, to release, to soften in, to deepen. And now for the extensors, I like to add in some movement with my working arm. So bending and extending uh, the elbow. And in this way, you create a little bit of movement back and forth over that tendon. So extensors of the form originate here. So by working the muscle attachments, we hope to create more release uh, through the rest of the muscle. You can stay with the elbow bent and do just a little bit of movement at the elbow side to side for some cross fiber friction. And when you feel like you've done some good release there, you might start to extend the arm again, focus more on the forearm pressure versus the elbow pressure, and then try to create that same drag, pressing down and then dragging towards the wrist. Good, and taking more time here, really allowing the muscles to unfold and then letting that go. Another option is to use a tennis ball for a similar effect. Starting with the forearms, we're gonna find the common flexor tendon. So again, 
uh, where it originates, we have both the common extensor tendon and flexor tendon. They both originate towards the elbow. We should find that ropiness. And starting with the pressure down, forearm onto the uh, ball, tennis ball, lacrosse ball. You can use your hand to kind of give some more pressure down, but I like using the forearm. It's a little bit easier. And starting with that pressure down, kind of find a good spot. And then from there, adding in some movement through your bottom hand. So flexing and extending the wrist, and creating a pin and stretch action. And then with the ball, you can also roll, create that cross fiber friction, roll the ball towards you and away. And then you can make your way down the muscle as well with the ball. Um, just kind of rolling a little more freely, almost like it was a foam roller, side to side, forward and back. And then for the extensors, again, flipping your palm over, pressing the extensors right into the tennis ball. Again, it can be a little bit trickier with the angle here, but getting it towards the elbow. And then using the opposite arm to give that pressure down, staying with the static pressure, and then you can add in the flexion extension of the wrist. Just using that movement to kind of break up any adhesion to the muscles. And here you can try rolling up and down the extensors, but again, because it's not as meaty of a muscle, it might be trickier and you might just find it's more bony. My favorite way of releasing the forearms um, is using your knee. So we can't get to the extensors really, but for the flexors, this works great. You're gonna take your forearm down towards the floor, palm facing up, and then getting almost into like a little tabletop position, you can place the other forearm on the ground too, and take your same knee, same arm, and place the knee on top of the forearm. Again, starting close towards the elbow, and then rocking your weight forward to get that nice pressure. So it's gonna be a broader pressure, um, but because of the weight of your body, you can get a lot more. And really just sitting with that pressure, breathing into it. You can always back off a little bit. And then just make your way down the forearm. All the way down towards the wrist. Holding here longer though, taking some breaths with it all the way down. Good. Now after all that work, I'm going to do some stretching to release that, show the muscles some new length. For flexor stretch, just turn your fingertips to face towards you, palms face down, and then start to lean your way back. I like to keep my toes tucked under for a little more control. You might just kind of rock a little bit forward and back, and then just find a static position. And now this is a great place to stay. If you want to add some cat cows into it, that can be a nice way to release through your forearms when you're taking your regular cat cow at the beginning of the class. Inhaling to lift up, exhaling to round in. And when you round in, it's where, you're, where you'll feel that deeper stretch. Inhale, make sure not to hyperextend your elbows if you have a tendency to do that. Keep a softness there, especially with your extension. As you round in, You'll get that deeper stretch. And when you're ready to release, move nice and slow. You're gonna to try to get some stretch to the fingertips as well. So slowly shifting your weight back, allowing the heels of the hands to release first. Keep the fingertips down as long as you can. Get that stretch through the fingers and then release, giving a little shake. Now you can simply do an extensor stretch by taking the opposite, the backs of your hands down, staying here. Uh, fingertips facing each other is a little less intense. Fingers facing you uh, is more intense. And again, that same like rocking back, creating more of that stretch that way. But my favorite way to release through the extensors and getting a little uh, hand and foot massage as well is in gorilla pose. It might not be the deepest extensor stretch because you aren't doing that rocking back, but this is a nice way uh, whenever you're in a forward fold if you want that extra extensor stretch. 
So take pillow pose and get that little massage by rocking your weight side to side, shifting your weight forward so you get that compression into the hands. All that stimulation to the nerve endings in your hands and feet. And finally, one more extensor stretch variation is one that we use with a breathing exercise as well. So you can get kind of a double benefit there. Taking the backs of your hands to your rib cage and elbows really reaching down towards the floor. As you inhale, imagine your rib cage expanding sideways. Exhale, the rib cage comes in, elbows soften even more. So this is a great way to really focus on that expansion of your rib cage with your breathing, rather than moving through the belly, through the chest. This is an expansive breath, imagining only moving sideways, not forward and back and in. And the more you can do that, pressing your rib cage into the backs of your hands with your inhale, and then really softening it with your exhale, we move deeper and deeper into that extensor stretch. You can add in the curling of the fingers as well to take that stretch even deeper. And then always just giving a little shake, releasing after all of that. And finish up one more little stretch for the median nerve. So a nerve that uh, goes through the carpal tunnel. A nice flexor stretch, but you will feel that more tingling kind of nerve sensation. Reaching both hands out to the side. For me, because my flexors are tight, I can feel the nerve sensation right away here. Uh, but we're going to focus on one at a time. Start to drop your right ear towards your right shoulder and then can release that right hand down and we'll focus on the left side. And just breathing here, really extending the fingertips towards the back of your forearm and releasing the ear away from that lifted hand. And you can start to Release the fingers towards the floor a little more. Play with movement up and down. Notice what sensations change. You might flex and extend the wrist. And then doing the other side as well. Noticing any differences. Playing around with movement and then finding some time for more of a static hold. Breathing into it.